Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live streaming with regards to home support worker and the uh, <coughs> for the nannies. So I'm hoping that you guys are. Hold on. Welcome to. So this is again. This is live. So everything can go. Everything happens. So I'm hoping that you guys can share this live stream to your families and friends. My name is Israel Roman, and we'll go get to our presentation. Okay. So once again. It's the Home Child Care Provider Pilot Program and the Home Support Worker Pilot. My name is, is again, it's Israel, Israel Roman. I am the uh, Immigration Consultant. And at the same time, the uh, practice, and at the same time, I am a practicing registered nurse in Canada. <clears throat> Our offices are so here in Canada, you have that one, and I'm all British Columbia. And then in the Philippines, you have the, uh, we have it in JP Laurel, Lipa City, Batangas, Philippines. So what is the Home Child Care Provider Pilot and the Home Support Worker Pilot Program? So basically, this is, this is a new program that started last year. June 2019 and basically it would be an open work permit for caregivers wanting to come to Canada when they apply they will be given an open work permit to come to Canada and work uh, temporarily and this would be occupation restricted so this is very important because before before June of last year, the permit that caregiver gets would be occupation restricted and at the same time, employer restricted. This time around, it is only occupation restricted. So you come here with your open work permit and it would say there, caregiver, work as a caregiver. And but it won't say who your employer is, meaning to say when you come here, work for this employer and things didn't go well, you can always change employer without needing to apply for a new work permit. And this one doesn't need an LMIA or labor market impact assessment. So that's good for the uh, our employers here. If you have any questions, anything, if uh, you think I'm going so fast, too slow, any questions, just go ahead and give your uh, comment. And then I will, from time to time, look at the comment and answer your questions. So aside from the open work permit, when the caregiver applies for this one, would also, at, this, at the same time, it will be for a permanent residence application. And then after completing your two years of work here in Canada, you'll get your permanent resident, your official permanent residence status. So this is another one, uh, another big difference with this new program we're in. This new program, because you have an open work permit, at the same time, you have a permanent residence application. So you don't, you cannot submit a work permit for a caregiver only. You need to you need to uh, submit both open work permit and permanent residency application. So they have, and you have to meet the eligibility for both at the same time. You cannot just apply for an open work permit and then say, I'll apply for the permanent residency later on. No, you have to do both and you need to qualify for both. So what is your, what is the eligibility for this one? So you need to have a genuine and a valid job offer. So you cannot just be, you can't come here without any offer, of course. 
and this one would be for a full time which means the employer should have it in in on your job contract 30 at least 30 hours of paid work that would be considered full time and you're able to do the job so as a caregiver you need to be able to show that you have either a caregiver certificate you have a training or something equivalent right so caregiving experience could be one year of nanny or caregiver uh, and a paid it has to be paid it cannot be volunteer and if if in the philippines you cannot just say yep i worked for i was looking after my parents mom and i was getting paid you need to be able to prove that you're getting paid and not just the employment certificate but you need to have like a sss or like ebig and it should show that the employer is contributing to your sss or pag ebig And something equivalent that would be, sorry, uh, something equivalent would be if you are a, you have a nursing degree or you're, a, yeah, if you're a nursing degree, then that is something equivalent for sure. I don't think I'm presenting the slideshow. So let me just double check, okay? Again, we are live here, so as I've said, anything can happen. Okay. Okay, so now thanks. Sorry, everyone. So again, <clears throat> now I could see that the uh, the PowerPoint is now showing. So yeah, so this is my first slide, and saying that my name it's Israel Roman, licensed immigration consultant, and at the same time practicing registered nurse here in Canada, which is I think it would be very important when we talk about. How do you, how will you be able to get your employer here in Canada? And here are our offices, Nanaimo and Nanaimo, British Columbia and Lipa, City, Lipa Batangas, Philippines. So I've said, when you come here, you'll be applying for both the open work permit and the permanent residency. And Eligibility would be, yeah, again, your genuine job offer. It has to be a full time and 30 hours per week and able to do the job, which is you need to have your caregiving course or training or something equivalent. So let's say nursing. There is a comment. Do they require experience in caregiving? I am graduate of caregiver but I do not have related experience. So as long as the caregiving course is TESTA approved, if you're in the Philippines, then yes. And um, it has to be a recent uh, training. So in preparation though, it would be good if you take some volunteer work or some other courses as well while while doing your, while you're doing your application, right? So, and the caregiving course or experience cannot be more than five years ago and you meet the language level which is a clb in ielts clb5 so in ielts that would be reading a 4.0 and the rest would be 5.0 so with this one this would be very uh, attainable i'm pretty sure everyone will be able to get this uh, score good <clears throat> next you need the uh, meet the education requirement. So when we say education requirement, you, and 
the uh, meet the uh, language level and the education requirement these are both required for your permanency application so this is their eligibility or criteria or uh, requirement yes so for education it has to be one year post secondary course so and it has to be equivalent here in canada and how do we know if it's equivalent right so as a high level overview if you're a graduate if you're in the philippines right now and graduate high school so that would only be before the grade 12 was implemented so that would only be go up to grade 10 and then you have a two-year degree course so what would happen is your first year in college that would be considered your grade 10 i mean grade 11 your second year in college would be considered your grade 12. So meaning to say you're still lacking that one year post-secondary. So to be safe, it has to be your college degree or your college uh, education should be at least three years. And are admissible to Canada. So no criminal offense or misrepresentation. Misrepresentation would be something like you were submitting an application but you didn't include everyone in the application you didn't include your spouse or your brother or your sister or your children on the application itself or the documents that you have provided were not authentic or real so <clears throat> the other another new thing about this program is that not just you're applying for an open permit and permanent residency, you're also attaching your spouse and your children. So upon submission, upon a startup application, your spouse and your children or child needs to be included in that application. And when you get all get when you get approved, that means everyone gets approved, everyone will come here all at the same time. So no more waiting for your no uh, you don't have to wait for more than two years to uh, wait for your spouse to get here. So your spouse will get an open work permit. So the difference between this one and yours is that this one would no would not have any occupation restriction. So your spouse can work anywhere, any job, as long as he's qualified to, but yeah. And your dependent child will have a study permit in order to uh, and then your child will be uh, studying here while parents are working. With regards to the uh, employers, we'll be tackling that one later on down the, down the presentation, and yes. With regards to the common law partner, yes, as long as we can provide, we can show that the common law partner is really a common law partner, then yes, that common law would be part of that open work, part of your uh, application, right? So, and of course, your, your spouse and your child also need to meet the eligibility requirement. So we're when it comes for permanent residency so that would be and they should be admissible here to here in canada so no criminal offense so if your spouse has some problems with the law before then the entire application would be denied so for the employer so this would be responsibility of the applicant but i will I will show you later on how we are able to help our caregivers come here with their with employers even though i'm saying that it is your responsibility to uh, find your employer can the employer be my relative here in canada yes you that would be a good way if your relative here in canada is looking for help to take care of their kids or your parents or or an elderly then yes 
your relative can can sponsor you as their caregiver. No problem with that one. We just need to prove that the uh, em employer are able to they're able to provide a genuine job offer and able to, to pay the uh, caregiver. So we have to present their house, their income situation or financial situation. The spouse will not, the spouse doesn't need to have, yeah, there's a question here. Does the spouse need to get IELTS? No, you don't have to get, you don't need to have, uh, your spouse doesn't need to have the IELTS. So yeah, so I've said relatives who have children or have elderly parents. So what's the advantage then in joining with us, Roman and Associates Immigration? So the advantage is right now, so for our retainer fee for the can for as the consultant who will be processing your the application for the open work permit, the permit residency, and then the application for your spouse and your dependent child, we are right now providing fifty percent off on that one. So and the uh, the immigration fee can be negotiated with the uh, with the employer we're in they'll be the one to shoulder it so that it won't be you guys and it would be easier to negotiate now that the immigration fee is 50 percent off right so and as i've said so no additional retainer fee for your spouse or dependents usually usually retainers fee would be for the spouse, for the applicant only. And if you have a spouse, there's additional cost. If you have a child, there's an additional cost. But for this time around, for if you're joining us from this, uh, if you're joining us after this live stream, then yes, 50% off and no additional fee for your spouse or dependents. As part of joining us, you'll have unlimited IELTS review. So we'll register you to our uh, review class and you'll have uh, unlimited re review sessions on that one and also uh, this includes your IELTS exam so you don't need to worry about paying for your IELTS exam and at the same time we will represent represent you to our Canadian employers that's why I told you earlier that it's important to to know that I am also a registered nurse here in Canada, wherein I have now connections to potential employers or employers uh, coming to us, to our office, looking for caregivers. So also we, once you join our company as our one of our caregivers, so we will be uh, advertising your profile as well to our website, to our social media, and again, networking. So networking, as I've said, so as a nurse, I'm able to, there are people, our employers come to me asking for, hey, do you have a, uh, do you have a caregiver? I need help with my parents who are getting uh, discharged from the hospital, or I have a, uh, or, or even like a, a staff, my colleague who are looking for nannies as well, because, uh, they need to come to work in the hospital and need a nanny. So our credentials, so again, I am a licensed Canadian immigration consultant. So not everyone, so just to be make, to make sure that you guys are working safe with your, whoever you're getting your advice from, anyone that give us, gives advice, in immigration, Canadian immigration needs to be licensed with Immigration Consultant of Canada Regulatory Council. They cannot just provide advice, not unless they are your family members. If they're not your family members, then they're not supposed to be doing that one. So they're doing it Ill illegally, can't they? And company, I'll show you later, I'll show you guys later on how to. Uh, search for our company in the Canada Business Registry. 
and finding an employer. So again, we will be helping you because of our Canadian presence here. So I, I, yeah, so we are here in Canada. We will be your liaison in terms of finding employers for you. Immediate relative as for the employer, yes, definitely. And uh, we also have a company here called Home is Best Caregiver Services Limited, wherein we provide recruitment for caregivers. So this is our platform for our employers seeking seeking uh, caregivers or looking for caregivers. And then also the other one is our nan nannies on the block. So let me just show you guys. Okay, I'm just making sure that you guys can see this one as well. Perfect, you can see it. So one of the things to see if your consultant is no, nope, not that one, sorry. If your consultant is licensed, so you go to Immigration Consultant of Canada, And then you scroll down and you'll see in here, learn more, public registry. So you type in the name of your consultant. So for, for this one, it would be me. So Roman and first name Israel and hit search. And you'll see in there that that's my name right there. My status is active and you can contact me and that's my license number, R524540. And you can contact me, that's our address here in Nanaimo, BC, Canada, and that's our name of our company. Now the other one that I have here in my presentation is how do we check for your name? Nope, not that one. Oh, sorry. I lost the uh, I lost the link on that one. Let me just check here. There you go. So Canada's business registry. So you go to British Columbia and you type in our company. Okay, that's too many. There you go. So Roman Associates. So this is uh, this company is a corporation and it's registered so the other one that we were i showed you guys home is home is best okay so that's our other company that we're in our employers come to our office saying, hey, we need, I need caregivers, I need Danny. So that's the company that we use for that one. 
Now, the other thing is, are you, in terms of me, myself, am I really Israel Roman? So, so you can type in Israel Roman Nanaimo and what shows up. So it shows up our business, which is Roman Associates Immigration Services Limited. And you can see uh, that's me right there. And also here, the Naimo Hospital Donation. So I'm really, Israel Roman really do exist here in the Naimo. And this is, that's myself as well with the guest. And there you go, we can read it. So yeah, you can also search Israel Roman. So yeah, so that's the, uh, our registration here in British Columbia. So yeah, so I'm hoping that that kind of like uh, proves who I am and our company. Okay. Any questions with that one? No. Okay, so that's good. So yeah, so whenever you guys are dealing with agencies, consultants, do not ask the questions, are you legit or scam? Because they'll always say, no, they're, I mean, yes, they are legit and that is not a scam, right? So I don't think anyone would be true and honest on that one. So please do your own research. Uh, like you can, you can, I give you some guides on how to research on that one. So immigration consultant of Canada regulatory council, and then you have the Canada business registry kind of thing to really see if their business is existing. So how much are we really talking about? Okay, so for caregivers, the lowest wage here in Canada averages $12.50 with a high of $24.50, a median of $16.50. And for a nanny, it's a bit lower, but decent. So lower lowest would be $11.32, and then median would be $14.11, or the highest would be $20. So how much real, how much does that one would really be for a month or a year? So let's say you're a nanny and the median wage is 14.11 so that's what your employer did will be giving you. So 14.11 times 40 hours per week so that would give you 564 per week. For 4 weeks so or in a month that would give you $2,256. And for a year, then that would be $27,000. So it might not be, it might not seem a lot, but if you convert that one to Philippine peso right now, that would be almost a million for a year for looking after a child or being a nanny. So, but if you were to look, uh, to look after a, care, a elderly, it could be it would be higher, so it would be more than you'll be earning more than a million for sure. And this one's only straight time hours; it doesn't include your overtime hours. Is it taxable? Definitely, it is taxable, and you'll see that your tax goes to somewhere right you can see it because you're if you're bringing in a child education would be free until uh until grade 12. so that's where your my tax goes to is uh education and for health so <clears throat> in terms of how much uh would this cost me as a uh, 
an applicant. So our administration fee for all the work that we'll be doing would be 48,000. So that would be uh, due upon submission of your application. And again, by joining our, by joining this, uh, our company, our caregiving, caregiver pool right after this uh, live stream, this would include your unlimited IELTS review, your IELTS exam, and your the retainer fee for the consultant would be 50% off and no additional fee for your spouse or child. And your application costs, your visa would be 8925 your application processing fee, which is 19250 This one right here, your application, your this is for your permit residency, your 19250 That's your permit residency. Your 8900 that would be for your work permit. And then your medical exam, and then your biometrics. And then later on, once you have completed your two-year work, then uh, you'll have to pay seventeen thousand one hundred fifty. So total cost would be hundred ten, but you're getting nine hundred forty-seven thousand. So that's nothing, I think. Now, if you are going to add your spouse, then this would be the, the your spouse for the processing fee. Would have an additional 550 for 90 that would be for their permit this would be for the the 490 that would be for later on after that two years of working as a caregiver and then the other 550 is uh that's the initial one and then for your dependent child 150 and then of course your spouse will need to have a medical exam as well and everyone in the family would need to have the biometrics. So this one right here is for your additional family members. And then the retainer fee that would be negotiated with the employer, 50%. And uh, addition, and there won't be any additional for your spouse or dependent would be to that. Those are the uh, prices right there. So again, this would be if you have additional family members but if we go back this would be the sole applicant right so administration fee of forty thousand once you register with us and again by registering with us you'll have your unlimited review ielts your ielts exam your 50 percent off on your on the retainers fee that the employers uh, will be paying so that will be good for the employers that would be a good motivation for them to hire you and at the same time we will be since uh again we are here in canada we'll be uh, and our employers are knocking on our office doors you'll the employers are here we are able to easily liaise with them and you and connect the employers to you guys and that's how we will get you guys an employer I think it would be hard to get an employer if you're not here in Canada, you're let's say you're in the Philippines and you're trying to get an employer because you don't know what's happening, right? And how would they connect with you? By joining uh joining our team right here, the employers do come to uh do come and they do look for caregivers like you. So and of course I cannot I cannot show everyone that's needing caregiver that's needing needing a caregiver work that lives in the Philippines, right? I need to make sure I need to know I need to have a pool of my own kind of thing so that these are my caregivers and yeah, and I present it to my employers. Okay. Total amount in pesos or dollars. Okay, so on this uh, page right now, on the right hand side, so that would be in in pesos right now. I did convert that one to 35, 35 pesos and now thirty five pesos per Canadian dollar. 
So for the administration fee, yes, that is for the eight thousand. And so you once uh, we have considered that yes, you are qualified, then we can start the application. And that, that's we won't be taking your forty eight thousand not until we know that you can be a caregiver here in Canada, right? So if you don't have any caregiving course or experience or equivalent, even though you have 48,000, we won't be accepting you, unfortunately, because you'll just be wasting your money. Right? And we don't want that one. We will only be accepting applicants that we know that will pass the application, right? We'll qualify for for this program. And is it one time payment? Unfortunately, yes. The forty eight thousand would be a one time payment. How about the processing time? So the processing time right now, because this is a uh, it is an open work permit plus a permanent residency application. The processing time right now would be more than six months. We're looking at between nine months to one year. And the reason being is because Canada would like to make sure that once you are approved, you are a qualified permanent resident, really, right? Before it was, the application was only for a work permit, so it was quick, it was, I have, I have clients here. Before, I have clients here who had their open work, who had their work permit approved for less than two months, but that won't be the case this time around because this one again would include your permanent re residency application. So, so what is the process then? So the first one is. So we have to check your eligibility, right? So with this one, you don't have to pay anything on this one. It's just making sure that we can proceed on your on the next step. Next, once you're, we have checked, and yes, you do qualify. You have your caregiving experience and uh, whatnot. Then we will send you an email with all the details and our and our payment mode as well and bank information and so so that uh, we'll start the application process i did mention our our bank as well so just make sure if you are not, and if you're not for those people who are not going to going with our office and you're paying someone an agency as well or someone acting as a consultant just make sure that you ask them that I would rather have my money transferred to your bank account or to your business bank account and try to avoid paying in, in uh, Western Union, especially if, if it's outside of Philippines, right? You're sending it elsewhere outside the Philippines because that's a bit fishy right there. So, yeah. It's okay if, if you're paying cash and it's in an office or you're going into, let's say in the Philippines, you're paying in an office, then that's fine, right? You know that there's an office really, or you're paying, you're paying it in a bank or into their bank account. So yeah, you can, at least you can trace it, right? And then next would be your ECE or your evaluation credentials, evalu Yes, evaluation of your credentials. So making sure that you have that one post, that the one year post secondary course, and then prepare the documents for submission and then submit to IRCC or Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada. And you fly to Canada with, if you have your spouse as part of your application and your child, then the three of you will be coming here. You'll be working as a caregiver your spouse will then be looking for jobs here, which there's tons of jobs here for sure. And then your your child will now be going to school and school here starts in September. 
Hi, sir. I'm an RN, but not currently working in hospital. And I do have caregiver experience way back 2010-11. Am I still qualified? And qualified to apply. Yes. If you are on, uh, let me just, uh, we are currently working in hospital, not currently working in hospital. So it's hard to say right now for that one. So just submit your resume, your detailed resume, and we'll take a look at that one. And if it's a go, then we'll let you know that it's a go. If not, then unfortunately it's not. And we can, we will tell you what you can do in order to come here but there's other ways if caregiving is not for you at this time there's always a uh, the express entry or the uh, study permit which i'm sorry unfortunately i won't be talking about that one here in this presentation but on our different live stream i'll uh, yeah we have a live stream on study permit and we'll have a live stream on express entry as well But yeah, as I, uh, but I worked as a dialysis nurse for a year. So yeah, so it's gonna be, uh, I, will, I don't wanna say yes or no to you at the moment because I wanna see, I want to give you an accurate answer. So if you submit your resume, then yeah, we'll uh, let you know for sure. I'm just scrolling, scrolling on the comments, see if I missed any questions. So employers, yes. Yeah. So again, finding employers, yes. We will help you find your employer. We will be assisting you finding employer. And our presence here in Canada would be very helpful for you because we are your face here. We are your, we are your face here to your employer, to your future employer. So yeah, so we will be, and again, we have employers here coming and asking for caregivers such as uh, like you guys right so and i live in a if you go if you search nanaimo or or vancouver island you will find out that vancouver island is a retirement place so there's tons of uh, elderly that are looking for caregivers they don't want to they want to stay at home and they don't want to they don't want to be placed in a residential facility or or that would be a home for the agent in the philippines so rather than going in that setting they would rather stay at home and be safe with a caregiver is there an age limit so Canada doesn't have an age limit. So we don't look at age. We don't look at religion. We don't look at your face. We, as long as you can do the job, you, you can get hired, right? So yes, no age limit on that one. Now, why do they say we don't look at the face? Because usually, yeah, so when I first started here in Canada, someone would say to me why does this resume have picture because i work in the hospital and we look at hiring process we hire nurses i hire nurses here and they, they tell me well why does your resume have picture and my answer to that one is i'm pretty sure that resume no offense is from a filipino it's a filipino because there's a picture there's a religion there is a marital status, which typically here, a resume doesn't show those things because that is a form of uh, discrimination, right? So, so resume here, if it's a, yeah, it, there won't be any picture, there won't be marital status, there won't be any religion kind of thing, right? So yeah, so yeah, that's just uh, going off topic, but yes, so no, no age limit.
I have 2008 caregiver certificate would still would still be valid if that's the only one 2008 since it's already 2020 that's 12 years ago it won't be it's not a recent caregiving course so but if you want us to look at your resume fully just uh send uh yeah send your resume to the R for eligibility check <clears throat> my last nursing job was 2013 for 13 years six years in icu and my qualified 2013 that is a not a recent experience so it might not be qualified no so what's the next step I know I've showed you guys a lot of things. So what's the next step to join our team and avail of our v, that promo or our 50% registration for 50% on our retainers fee, the free the IELTS, the free IELTS, the free IELTS exam, and finding an employer. So you, please comment your email address and your contact number, please. And then we will also send you a summary of this presentation so that you have, you can go back to the presentation on your own, on your convenient time. You will have to send your resume to this email address, which is clientcare at romancanadianimmigration.ca. So once you have submitted your client, your resume with the subject line live stream July 17, 2020, then we would know that what you're asking for is kind of like, you're asking for us to check your eligibility and that you're very much interested and that you're committed. And so upon submission of your resume and us checking your eligibility, and we find that you're eligible then we send you another email about it and the next steps as well and that would be the start of the registration or start of the application yeah so then that's how i've said i was going too fast so eligible if you're eligible then uh, start the registration register or start the application so please again comment say your uh, email address or your contact number and then we'll send a summary and then send us your detailed resume please on the address in there i'm typing out the address in the comment section as well to make it easier Client care at Roman Canadian Immigration. That's it. So So that's the last slide for our presentation. But I'll be here still for any more comments. Any more comments? So yeah, thank you for submitting your uh, Russian, your email address and phone numbers. Is there anyone there that would like me to repeat any of the slides? Yeah, so please share this in the information that you have heard. 
and again, just showing you the, uh, the process right here. So eligibility check, and then start of the application, ECE, prepare the document application, and then fly to Canada. Any more questions? Don't forget to comment your email address, please, and your contact number. And please submit your detailed resume. To client care at Roman Canadian Immigration at TA and with the uh, subject line live stream July 17, 2020. And once you are, we figure out that you are eligible, then we'll go ahead and start the process. Again, we won't be, we won't be starting, we won't be asking you for to register and pay that 48,000 if you're not eligible, right? So yeah, so we have to make sure first that you're eligible. And again, our after please include live stream July 17 so that we know that you are guys when you when you submit your resume, you guys are submitting your resume for this live stream wherein I did say that you're getting a free IELTS review, unlimited IELTS review, your IELTS exam paid for, and your as part of our pool of candidates, pool of caregivers, we are representing you to the employers that are knocking on our doors, so I mean like on our office, and or just talking to me, asking me, do you have any caregivers? And that's why I, I still continue on to be a nurse here so that I have that connection with the uh, employers. Again, I think it would be hard if, if you are in the Philippines and try to look for employers. Yeah, you can search it online, you might be, but it's, it's, there's a big time difference as well and whatnot, right? So right now, I st started this, started this uh, live stream 7.30 p.m. Philippine time, that would be 4.30 a.m. here, right? So, yeah. Sir, if I may, current application po kami as study permit, open work permit po ako, pwede ba mag-apply sa program? So, I need more details on this one. You can, if you want, you can call me. You can call me on what's, what's up. And that would be, that would be my number. Okay. I think that's it for now and hope to see you guys on our next live stream and that could be either the same like live stream or the uh, study permit live stream or live stream about express entry all right thank you everyone and have a good evening no not that one And have a good night.